All right, we are ready to go. And welcome, welcome to the end of the first week of the Calgary Fermentation Festival. It has been an incredible uh, four evenings. We're on to the fifth. Here is session eight featuring other, none other than Eli Ross, who's going to be sharing with us the magic of natto. What a beautiful food, what a beautiful man, and what a beautiful art form that uh, we are about to witness. And he's he's got a lot to share with us here. So let's uh, pass this on to him right away. And uh, again, type in your comments, your questions, and we'll, uh, we'll bring those up at the end and get everything answered. So take it away, Eli. Excellent. Well, thank you. I want to thank the Calgary Fermentation Festival for putting on the festival this year, despite everything that's going on. It's really special to have this in our city. We should all be very blessed. Thank you, Denis. Thank you, Malcolm, for putting this on, all your energy and work. And thank you to the Light Cellar as well for hosting me tonight in this beautiful facility in their kitchen. Awesome. Just can't, can't say enough good things. Really special to be here. And thank you, everybody that's tuning in. Without you guys, we wouldn't have a fermentation festival. So thank you guys for tuning in as well. So as Malcolm said, my name is Eli Ross. I am the fermenter at Kyoko Fermentation. Um, we are a Japanese company. My wife is from Japan and uh, we, we bring to you something very special tonight, which is natto. Uh, Kyoko Fermentation, I wanna just take a minute to tell you a little bit about us and, and where we're coming from. Um, my wife is from Japan and her family has four generations of history in Japan making ferments such as miso and shoyu, some really special stuff. You can see some photos behind me. This is one of their stores um, in the city. And this is Kyoko, her great grandmother. And so we, you know, we come from a very special place with this. Uh, this is a lot of traditional, a lot of historic type of stuff. Very, very special for us. But Kyoko, Kyoko not only being her, her grandmother, um, the word Kyoko, when we translate that into English, means clean and pure. And that's really the directive for our company. Uh, we we want to ferment things that are clean. We really only ferment things that are one ingredient at a time. Very, very uh, dedicated to that aspect. We also only use organics. That's that's a commitment that we've made. So that's another aspect. And uh, yeah, it's, it's special. It's special for me because it's um, not only the grandmother, but the mom and my wife and my daughter, all, all part of this. And I'm, I'm lucky to carry on with all of that amazing female energy and, and to represent all of them. So you can find our products, the natto and the skimono, and some of the other new things that we're going to be making. You can find that here at the Light Cellar. This is definitely our home base. We love the Light Cellar, always stocked up here. But we also carry our products at a real, at a, uh, real food cafe in Inglewood Brew. We also are stocking our product at Lotus Herbal at both of their locations. And we've also now started to supply some Japanese restaurants in town as well. Uh, Shimizu is a restaurant that's actually close by here and they're carrying our natto as well. So you can find our natto and our products all over and uh, we're, we're just grateful to be able to make the products. So tonight we're here to talk about natto and what, what is natto? We've got some soybeans, we, we've got some bacteria, all of this stuff on this side is to make some, some lovely uh, uh, prepared foods with that. But how do we make natto and what is it all about? I am going to refer to my notes a little bit. I apologize about that, but it's been many months of being at home and not being out in front of people. So my presentation uh, does require some notes. Um, so natto is soybeans and bacteria. At the, at the heart of it, that's all that it is. Outside of that, it's the love, passion, and everything else that we put into it. So with, uh, with that said, this is an alkaline ferment, which is very special as well. When we were fermenting stuff with salt, when we're getting to that acidity level, it's actually, in my opinion, kind of safe. You know, we, we know where we're headed. We know how that works. When we're working with alkaline, there are some unexpected results that can happen. So we have to sort of carry this into the right zone to make it all work well. Natto is really a superfood. Well, I think natto is a superfood. You can tell me after I uh, tell you the benefits of natto. The benefits of natto is that it's the highest food source in the world for vitamin K2. K2 is a really special vitamin. Uh, and this K2 is actually MK7, which is the parent to all the other K2s that are available in our leafy greens and different things. Uh, this, is, this is the parent, uh, vitamin K2, MK7. So highest food source in the world for that, quite, quite good. 
Uh, it's also a spore probiotic. As Sasha spoke about a couple of days ago about probiotics in our stomach, this is we're using a spore bacteria and creating a spore, back, spore probiotic. So very cool stuff there. That probiotic is sticky and it will last in our stomach and in our intestines for up to four days because of the sticky nature of it. So that's kind of cool, but it's also very long reaching as well. When it hits the acid of our stomach and, and that harsh environment, it goes into a spore form but continues to live and carries on into the hardest places to reach. So long lasting, long reaching, very cool as a, as a probiotic. Um, the other part of, of natto is that it's a very clean plant-based protein. There's actually 10 grams of protein in one of our servings. So that's a, a, nice, a nice energy source as well. Daily source of fiber. And then one of the things that I think is really special is there's a, an enzyme that's created in the fermenting process called natto kinase. Natto kinase is a blood thinner and it helps to dissolve blood clots. And so that, and those two things uh, together are going to improve our circulation. So we've got improved circulation, great for cardiovascular health. And in fact, in the States, there's a lot of research going on now about how natto can help with cardiovascular diseases. That's very prevalent in the States. So very cool stuff. Uh, highest food source of vitamin K2, spore probiotic, plant-based protein, daily source of fiber, and the natto kinase. All of that from one ingredient. To me, I'm going to be honest, I think that's a superfood if I've ever heard of one. Very cool stuff. Now, where does this come from? Like we, we clearly were a Japanese company. Does this come from Japan? It's an interesting, interesting story behind all of that. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. And where it starts from is actually not Japan, which is kind of funny. Uh, the probiotic or the, uh, the bacteria has been used around the world to create ferments for longer than we have probably even been on this planet. Um, the bacteria has been around in the soil, which is very cool. When they talk about eating handfuls of soil, it's this bacteria that we're after. So very cool stuff. But where, where does it come from? In the other parts of the world, they've used different legumes and seeds and other things to ferment with this bacteria. But it wasn't until they started in Japan using soybeans in this bacteria that this product was really developed. So this is the highest nutrient dense product you can create with Bacillus subtilis. Uh, the other variations of it don't even come close. They don't create the vitamin K2. They don't create natto kinase. So there's a lot of different things that aren't happening in those other variations. So once it hit Japan, which we have about 930 years of written history in Japan about natto and over 3,000 years of verbal history. So let's say, let's say 900 years ago when it's really started in Japan, uh, the story goes that there was a great battle between two, two armies and uh, they had battled all day and it was nighttime, they were taking a break, they were gonna feed the horses that had been boiling soybeans all day and the opposing army attacked them one more time. And so in that moment, they threw the soybeans in some straw, wrapped it up, put it on their horses and rode away, get out of there. A Couple days later, the brave souls opened that up to find these sticky beans. And they, they fed them to the horses and the horses responded so well. They thought, well, if the horses did so well, how about us? And they tried it and they, they felt the energy too. They responded so well to it that they started feeding it to their army and they actually won the war from, from that. So that's the story behind it many, many years ago. But as that's developed, what, we, what we're seeing is the benefits of the clean energy and the probiotics in, in our human body with that. So that's sort of the history of it, goes back very far. To me, I think the cool part is this bacteria comes from the soil and, uh, and that's where it really originates from. Bacillus subtilis is traditionally called a hay bacteria or straw bacteria. But one of the things that I've recently learned, which is really cool, is that it's also very prevalent in sage, in our garden, in our herbs. So in fact, uh, we could do this fermentation with leaves from our, from our herbs, some sage leaves on top of the soybeans, and we could generate natto as well. For us being a commercial uh, maker of this, we have to have a guaranteed amount of that bacteria in there, so it wouldn't work for a commercial purpose, but it could be something fun to try and experiment at home, is using some different, uh, using the sage leaves to, to make natto. So we're here to make some natto. That's the first recipe that I'm going to, to go through with you guys. It's a bit of a tricky process. It's, it's kind of funny because it's one ingredient. Uh, one ingredient doesn't sound too hard, uh, but in fact, it doesn't give us much to hide behind. We're really exposed and open to the process when we only have one ingredient. So how do we, how do we make natto? 
That's why we're all here tonight. How do we make natto? Well, these are, these are the soybeans. And the first part of making natto is selecting your soybeans. So these soybeans are, are round. You can see that they're round. And most soybeans look round when they're dry. But this is a special strain of, of soybean. This is a heritage bean. And when we rehydrate the heritage bean, it becomes oblong and like this. And so that looks, uh, looks a little bit different than the round. And what we like to do is we like to rehydrate them and then we go through a sorting process. So every batch of natto that I make, I spend at least one hour sorting the beans. That's my love, that's my attention, my care, my intent going into this batch. I spend an hour of sorting the beans, making sure that there's nothing in there that I wouldn't like. I take out anything that has a blemish, anything that has a mark, cracked, chipped, anything like that. I only want the very best to go into my ferment. I'm spending all of this time putting this together. I only want the very best beans. So that's how we, that's the first part is the beans. And then we need to add the bacteria and we need to ferment them. Doesn't sound all that hard. When we, when we put in the beans, when we, when we rehydrate the beans, we really hydrate them, rehydrate them for about 24 hours. Um, we rehydrate them in the fridge, so it takes a little bit longer, maybe 48. If you were to do this at home and soak them in, in some water, you could do that on your counter and it would maybe take overnight or 12 to 24 hours. So you're gonna rehydrate them, they'll plump up, they go about three times the size, three times the size of what you start with, and then it's about cooking them and steaming them. We use only organic, like I had mentioned. We use the very best quality water that we can find to rehydrate them. Water does, does matter, it does count. And then when we cook them. Now, traditionally they talk about boiling the soybeans. When you boil the soybeans, a lot of that nutrients is just leaking out of there. It's really not the nicest way to cook them. So how we like to cook them is we steam them. Uh, we steam them at a high temperature and to, to make sure that we are getting all of the microorganisms out of there that we don't want and to get it down to a very sterile level, um, we need to get to 120 degrees for at least 20 minutes during that steaming process. And we really do want them as sterile, sterile as possible. Um, we want that because we're going to introduce the bacteria that we want to be prevalent. And we don't want anything in, else in there to compete. And that's really the trick to making natto, is that we want to outcompete all the bad bacteria with the positive bacteria that we're putting in. Perhaps the trick for all ferments, really. So we, uh, we take that, we, we've steamed them up, we've cooked them. Now, now what do we do? Well, we, uh, we traditionally would strain these and we sort of through here and we would take these guys out. And one of the, th one of the tricks while I'm steaming, um, sorry, I should have sort of mentioned that. One of the tricks while I'm steaming is I always use two spoons, just, just in case. You never know what's gonna happen. One might hit the ground. And uh, the, the rule is that nothing goes back into the bowl or into the beans. If beans fall out, if anything falls out, that's fantastic. We're never gonna put that back in. We wanna start and take that as clean all the way through. So after we're done steaming the beans, um, or during the steaming process, sorry, what I like to do is I like to put boiling water into my mixing bowl. And I usually use two spoons in there. I get boiling water, I keep going. I actually use a very small pan and I just keep pouring boiling water in there throughout the steaming process. You guys did get the recipe for how long to steam them. It's about, it's about an hour, uh, an hour and a half. It really depends. And the recipe really honestly is not, it's not a uh, set, for anything, it's really more of a guide. And what I mean by that is that sometimes in your condition, your altitude, your steamer, however it's working for you, it may take longer. It may take an hour and a half, it may take two hours, it all depends. So you need to work that so that you're happy with the results. And what we look for is a bean that's soft and that squishes with nothing hard in the middle, that's when you know they're done. And they get to a real nice, almost a caramely sort of coffee type of uh, a flavor to them, fantastic. A little bit sweet almost. So really, really nice at the end of that steaming process. So I have this full of hot water and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm trying to sterilize this as well. I want everything to be clean that the beans are touching as it goes through. I would have hot water into my pan that I'm gonna be uh, actually making it in as well. 
everything clean, everything sterile, that's, that's the way we're going to go. I know that we talk about good bacteria, but in this case, we want to outcompete everything else with the one bacteria that we're going to add in. So what we would do, let me just pop this guy open. Let's pretend that this got steamed, okay? So we, we just steam this up. They're looking great. They're uh, uh, sort of a dark caramelly color, fantastic. We've, we've sorted these. So my trick in sorting them is to go back and forth between the strainer and the container. And uh, I, I use chopsticks and I take out anything that, that doesn't look appetizing. I want everything in there to be just 100%. Uh, the rule that I have is that I need no reason to take something out. If, it, if, it doesn't, if I don't like it, if it doesn't feel right, I just take it out and, and no, no worries about that. So now that we've got them pretended steamed, uh, we would then put them into our sterile container. So I, I usually take these guys, I put one aside just in case anything happens. I have a nice clean spoon to continue with, um, but then we're gonna put them into our container, the actual container that we're going to use. And at this point, I would be mixing in some bacteria. The bacteria, the bad news is the bacteria is not easily available. It's not easily available in the true pure form. Uh, we get the bacteria from Japan from a special lab that makes it just for us. And uh, it's, it's tough to get it from Japan right now. The shipping isn't working well with COVID and all that stuff going on. It's, it's not a happening thing. So I do have a solution. And that is you can use our natto that we've already made as your starter culture. So one of these containers, it's 50 grams. You can easily get about eight batches out of this. You don't need much. And so I would take this, I would, I would chop this up. And if I was making this at home, you could even freeze this uh, so that you have it for some time, chop it up into eight little cubes, take one of those cubes, mix it in with the hot beans, and you would mix that all in and make sure that all the beans have touched the bacteria. You want the, all the beans to look wet. So these, again, we are pretending like we have steamed these. We want all the beans to remain wet. You can even in, add in some of the water from the steaming process to ensure that they're wet. Not a problem, we want that, okay? So that's, that's what we're looking for. We're not looking for too, many, too much height. Um, we want oxygen in this ferment, which is kind of neat. This is a ferment that wants oxygen. So this is, the, this is the fun part, this is the trick part of making natto, is what do we do with it afterwards? So we've inoculated this with, uh, with the bacteria. We have, we have put them in there nicely. We've got a nice layer. And so this is the trick. Making natto, we want to start with a high humidity, but we, we need that humidity to reduce over the fermentation period. And the fermentation period is about 24 hours, but again, it's one of those things that it depends on your incubator. And I didn't even mention the incubator yet. Um, what we use and what we're going to use is an oven. And that's what I'd recommend for you to use at home. Use an oven, uh, put the oven light on, put a uh, heat lamp in there if you'd like. What we're trying to target is about 100 degrees, 39 degrees, 102 Fahrenheit. Uh, we want to target 39. In fact, you may need to target a little bit higher to maintain 39 throughout the 24 hours, but that's what we're striving for. So you can use different heat sources. You can use heat lamps. You can use um, heat, heat pads, uh, whatever works for you. It, it, it doesn't have to be specific, but we just want to target 39 degrees for 24 hours. So as I had mentioned, we want the humidity to be high in the beginning, but we need it to decrease, otherwise it won't work. So we've added moisture in here. We've made sure our beans are moist. They look moist. What are we gonna do? How are we gonna ensure that we're getting that moisture and that we're get, allowing it to breathe? We're gonna use saran wrap and tin foil. It's, uh, it's just the technique that works the best. And so our first part is the saran wrap. And we're going to put that over top. And although it appears that this is going to wrap here, it's actually not. So we're just going to keep it up there for now. We're going to use a toothpick and we're going to go and put, I would estimate we want at least a hundred holes in, in the top here. We want a lot of holes. So we're going to go through and we're just going to poke a lot of holes through all of here.
This is to allow the steam and the humidity to come off of the beans. We need the beans to dry out for the bacteria to develop. I had recently made a post on our Instagram, which is why natto. So please follow us. Get out there and follow us. We, we love that. Um, I made a post recently about uh, one of these doesn't look like the rest. And it was one of our containers that didn't ferment and all the other ones did. So please feel free in the comments. Let us know why, what you think. Why didn't that one ferment? I'll give you a clue. It has everything to do with what we're doing right now. Uh, if it can maintain the temperature, yeah. Yeah, so typically you're getting a lot of air movement, which I would say would cause problems, right? It would be too much air uh, moving around the container. Um, you do want some, but I think you would find that they would be wet at the end. Um, they wouldn't, they wouldn't, and it's kind of funny, but they wouldn't actually ferment and they would stay wet. So what happens, I'll give, I'll, I'll just give you the answer on, on, on the Instagram post. What happened in that case is that it didn't have any air to it. Um, so that container was completely sealed. I had missed putting, putting the holes in to allow for breathing and without air, the ferment won't work at all. So it's kind of tricky, too much air, it won't work. Not a, and none at all, and it won't work either. So you're looking for that in between. So now that I've got all the holes in here, here's the, here's the tricky part. We're gonna push that down, and we're going to put that right on top of the beans. Okay, so that goes in, and this is going to be, this is going to be absolutely stellar in the, in the final product. So with that on top of the beans, we are just sealing that in, making a nice moist environment in there. Getting up to 100 degrees is a nice warm temperature. Those beans are going to be humid in there. And that humid area is how that bacteria starts to grow. It loves that, but it can't maintain that for a long period of time. So that's the first level. Then we're going to use the tin foil and we're going to go right on top. And this time, we're gonna let that sit up there just like that. And we're gonna do the same thing with the holes. Now, one thing you may try is you may try a variation of how many holes you're putting on top. Right, so that's about 50 or so, right? You can see that it's breathing. You can see that there's that transfer. I don't know if we can see underneath there, not, not entirely, no. Um, but we've got the space, we've got the gap between our first layer, we've got that space, and then the tin foil. The tin foil is gonna keep the heat in and it's, uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna be great. So after this, and amazingly enough, making natto in this case, in, in this style, you actually get better results. You get, get better results than making them in small batches like this. Uh, the reason why is that all the beans together hold the heat longer. So it's kind of a neat thing. Making natto is, is quite, quite interesting and in all the different variations that can happen with it. So this is, this is what we would put in our incubator. So this is what I would put in the oven, uh, in a fermentation box. Um, we've been working on, on bringing in some little fermentation kits and, and uh, working on that, but they're not ready yet. But um, this is what we would be putting into that incubator. So how long do we ferment this for? We had mentioned 24 hours, but there's a bit of a trick to that as well. So once we get it into the, into the incubator, we don't want to touch it. We want to just leave it alone. We want all of that good, good air and, and uh, heat to do its magic, all the steam that happens. What's interesting is they actually generate their own heat for a while while they're fermenting. The bacteria and what's happening in there generates their own heat from there. And we're going to keep that all in with the tinfoil. So that's, that's, that's the process of, of getting it into the incubator. So we ferment for 22, 24 hours, but we're not done. We're, we're only halfway at that point. When we take it out of the incubator at that stage, we have just made our alkaline ferment. And one of the byproducts of making an alkaline ferment is ammonia. And so ammonia is generated from that process and we need to give that a moment to off gas. So we would take this out and we would leave it on the counter for at least an hour and allow that to off gas a little bit. We would then take that and put it into the fridge for another 24 hours to allow it to cool down and mellow down. 
It's very strong and you'll smell it uh, in your home when you're making it. It's very strong after the 24 hours, but it mellows down in that first hour and then even more 24 hours later. So we'd put that in the fridge for 24 hours and that would be my final product. So that's sort of our, our three days of making natto. We've got a day of rehydrating. We've got a day of actual fermentating, ferment, fermenting in an incubator. And then we've got a day of cooling it down and letting it mellow down before we're ready to consume it. And that's the process that we use to create the natto that we sell and that you guys enjoy right now. It's a three-day process. It's very, very, very cool. Uh, there is some challenges. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to say that it's super easy. Uh, it can depend on your incubator, whether it keeps the heat well, whether it's actually hotter than what you're setting it to. So there is some challenges in that regard. Um, and the other part of it is getting the bacteria. So those are some things. I definitely want to extend myself to anybody that's trying to make natto and struggling. If you're struggling, please don't, please reach out to me. I would just love to help you. Uh, I love to, to encourage people to make their own. There's no problem with that whatsoever. It's, uh, it's, that's available to you. The other part of this is that um, there's, there's one book that has really been uh, a great influence for me, and it is the Natto Miso and Tempeh book by our friends Kristen and Christopher Shockey. This is probably the only book in the world that has a, a guide to make natto in English. Uh, not only in English, but it's a fantastic book, great tips along the way. So if you're, if you're still struggling, if you've reached out to me and we still can't make it, um, we may want to go through that book together and see what parts we're missing. Yeah, but we'll, we'll get it, not to worry. So if you're wanting to, to look at this one, fantastic book, please, please enjoy that as well. All right, that was, our, that was our first bit. We're doing great for timing, I love it. Now, what, what do we do with Natto? This is, the, this is the part that I, I struggled with so much. What do we do with natto after we've made it? We, we've got this slimy, sticky, gooey beans that taste a little bit funky. What, how do we eat this? Great question. I love that question. So I do want to show you a couple of things. There, there is a bit of a uh, misconception in North America that we can just uh, get instant gratification when we eat natto. We open it up and we just scoop it up and uh, that's it. That's, that's not the way to eat natto. Please don't eat natto that way. Uh, natto, and you can see here, and if we can get a close-up on this one, uh, this, the bacteria is white and it's covering the beans. And in fact, we can just take that lid right off. You can see in there that the, that the bacteria is white it covers the beans. That bacteria on its own is actually quite bitter. We need to mix that up. We need to activate it. We need to get it flowing in there. We need to actually move it. On our instructions, we say stir it 100 times. And I know you've all laughed at that and not done it. But I really want you to stir it 100 times. That is how we're going to activate the bacteria. It's, uh, it's, it's not the same until it's all mixed in. So just uh, one, one moment, I'm going to just mix this guy up for us, and I'm going to show you what I look for when, when we make it, okay, or when we're ready to eat it. So it's our belief, and it's just our belief in our company, and, and what we think is that the bacteria shouldn't be disturbed until we're ready to eat it. At that moment, we engage it, we activate it, everything's fresh, that's the moment to eat it. So we take that and we mix it up really good, okay? That's not enough. That's not even close to 100. We need to really get it going. Okay, now we're getting close. That's probably somewhere in the 20s, but we still got lots more to go. And this is, this is the true part of making natto. You got you to stir that up. You got to activate that bacteria. And now you're seeing, you're seeing that nibba coming out, right? Like, let me get a, right? That's, that's what we're looking for is those strings. We're starting to get that activated. We're just starting. We're, we're just starting to get that activated. You can sort of see that as I mix it in here. It's getting harder. It's getting harder. I'm breaking a sweat. My arms are hurting. Now I know we're getting to the right place. Now I know we're starting to get that bacteria activated. This sticky part is what we want to see. Okay? Please don't eat natto with the white bacteria still, still there. That's a bitter taste that will probably turn you off. And that's not it. So at this point is when I would add the sauce. And let's just take a moment to talk about the sauce. Uh, it's something that I'm actually quite proud of. Uh, yeah, let's get saucy. 
So the sauce, uh, what, what is about the sauce? What's going on? How come we've had some and we've had some without and what's going on with all of that? Well, the sauce is something that's very special and dear to my heart because natto on its own, this is fantastic for cooking, but it's not the way I would consume it out of the, out of the container. We would need to add that sauce. And what that sauce is, is a, is a tare sauce or a ponzu sauce or um, those types of sauces. They're very, very much a Japanese sauce. And we have uh, dedicated ourselves to this process to making sauce for our beans. And so we are actually the very first company outside of Japan to make sauce uh, to make sauce for the beans. All the other natto companies in North America are just selling the beans, but we have done it with the sauce. And you can see here what that sauce looks like. Yeah, it's great. It's delicious. This is our new sauce that we've just made. So it's really, really great. Um, we use, again, all organic ingredients, all plant-based a lot of the sauces that come with traditional natto um, have a bonito flake in it, a fish flake in it, but we've decided to go plant-based and it's really, really delicious. So I would add it in at this point and that's again, mixing, 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 mixing. That's where we're getting to getting that sauce in there, getting that aroma going and getting that flavor. That's, that's, that's how I want you to eat natto. Okay. So if that hasn't happened for you up to this point, please try it the next time is to get it really mixed up, add in our sauce and enjoy it. Um, we're going to use this natto tonight to make natto bites, which is a recipe out of our friend's book. Um, and I've actually adjusted it a little bit and I've provided it to you in the handout as well. But this is a great way to get an energy bite, uh, a fat bomb per se, and, and be able to make them when you make your batch. You've got this batch. How am I going to consume all of that in a couple of weeks? Well, you can make some natto bites with it. You can freeze them, put them in the fridge, uh, and store them for some while, and fantastic. They're just amazing. You're going to taste them here tonight. Uh, they're going to be great. So we're going to use this natto to make that. Uh, and the first part of, of first, we're going to stir it up. I'm actually going to make, uh, make this with two batches of natto. I like it a little more a little more naughty, a little more natto-y than, uh, than the recipe. It, uh, our natto being fresh. So the difference between fresh and frozen, right? All the natto out of Japan, for them to export it, they have to freeze it. And so I just will take a moment to talk about that and why I've dedicated myself to making it fresh. The frozen natto, although it still serves its purpose on the protein, it still serves its purpose for the probiotics, but it, it's lost its flavor. It's lost its texture. And in fact, when we defrost the natto, we are losing nutrients as well. So it's really more out of necessity than for any benefit at all uh, to the product. So eating it fresh, a much bigger flavor, much bigger spectrum, um, just, just much, much nicer texture as well. Frozen natto is much more mushy, and that's, again, not the experience we want you to have. So we're going to mix up our, our second one here. And yes, chopsticks together, a little bit stronger a little more resistance in there. You want your arm to hurt. That's how you know the natto is mixed. But it also, you can see what happens here is that the nibba is starting to activate, right? Another little secret, if, if you could say that, I enjoy the natto warm. I, I don't care for it cold. Um, I like to take it out in the morning and eat it at night when I get home. And it's much nicer. It's actually a milder in flavor. Uh, just a fun experiment to try. Um, you know, it, depending on your comfort level, of course. But the nice thing with our natto is that it's completely sealed. It's, uh, there's no air getting in there whatsoever. It's safe. No problems with that whatsoever. All right. So we've got our natto out on the chopping board. And we're going to chop this up. In Japan, they actually make a really uh, neat style of natto that is already chopped. And so that's, uh, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to chop this up and we're going to get it ready to go into the food processor. So we're now on to our second recipe. All right. Please don't get scared about this part. This is a very big knife and uh, that's okay. But we need to chop this guy up. So just a, a minute here of banging. I don't know if we want to mute this, but we'll, uh, we'll get through it.
I promise you it's worth it. Don't worry. All right. For tonight, that will be lovely. These are chopped up. And it's just to help. This is not going to go well in the food processor. I can tell you that from experience. So we want to give it every helping chance we have. I've got all the ingredients out over here. These are all organic. Do your best. If you can't, if you can't get organic, don't worry about it. Don't sweat it. But you know, we're, we're putting together all of that intent, all of that love, all of that passion behind all of this. So we've got some fat, we've got some coconut butter, we've got some cacao nibs, cacao powder, coconut flake, some tahini. Please make your own at home. It's so easy, so good. And some raw honey and some black sesame. Uh, we've got some things for, for on top, but we're going to basically add all of this into the food processor. We're going to mix it up a little bit. Uh, we're going to use the Light Cellar's food processor over here. It looks a little intimidating, but we'll get through it. So we're going to put all that stuff in there. We're going to mix it up, and then we're going to make some natto balls and coat the outside with hemp seeds and, co and coconut flakes. And they're going to be delicious. So uh, bear with me while we put that all in the food processor. Uh, one thing is, don't start with your natto in the food processor. That's just a little tip. Um, I actually like to start with the fat and give it a quick blend first, just to break it all up. All right. Hey, we, got a we got a question for you too, Eli, while you're uh, getting all assembled. Yeah, you bet. So Jackie, we have a question from Jackie. She's, she's curious, what did they do before um, saran wrap and aluminum foil? Before, as in, how would in they the have made days. it without that? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So you can, um, there, there is another style, another technique, and basically the idea, and the reason why we put the saran wrap down next to the beans is so that any moisture that gets to the top and drips down isn't washing the bacteria off of the soybeans. So the other way to do it, if you didn't want to use these guys, and I don't blame you, but um, if you didn't want to use the, the tin foil, is to use cheesecloth. So you can put a sterile, take your cheesecloth, put it in boiling water, make sure it's sterile, and put that over top and keep it tight over top and then put the lid on. And that will help to keep it moist in there, absorb the moisture. Um, the lid could use some holes for air, that type of thing. But that's another way to keep the moisture in there, not allowing it to drip down and to work with it without the saran wrap and tinfoil. So hopefully that works for you. Uh, there, is other, there is other ways. Um, you can use parchment paper on top instead of the saran wrap. Um, you can try different things, different containers. The glass is actually really beneficial because it holds the heat, um, just like the, the tin foil. So again, when you're thinking about those other ways, you're trying to hold the heat in there. So it can be, it can be a, a whole glass container. Um, you can look for different containers, but you're trying to keep the heat in there and not allow the moisture to drip down onto the beans. All right. Well, wish us luck with the food processor here. We're gonna give it a little spin with the, uh, just the fat in there. I just wanna break that up a little bit. All right, that's looking like success. All right, we'll go with our other ingredients in here. And there's no special order. Uh, the only thing that I would say is uh, just keeping the natto in mind. We want to maybe mix that in a little bit at certain stages. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to put half in now, give it a little mix, and then put the rest of the ingredients in and the other half. So let's uh, figure that out a little bit. Okay, so while you're doing that, we got another question. Yeah. So if you were going to buy uh, your natto for the bacteria, and you're going to use that as your starter, do you need to pre-mix it as you did? You know, kind of activate it as you described that? I would. Yeah, absolutely. Because what's going to happen is once you put it into the container with the freshly steamed beans, you want to get all those beans coated with the bacteria. So if you were starting with beans that weren't mixed and still sort of white, um, you would have less of a chance of spreading that around everywhere um, as if it was mixed. And the, the key there is you sort of, there's a, a look to the beans and, and that may be a little bit hard to explain, but there's a look to the beans where they're still wet, a little bit glossy and, uh, and not dry. And that to me shows me that the bacteria has coated them. Everything's looking good and they're ready for, for the fermenting. All right, uh, so we put in half, we're gonna give it another little mix and then we're gonna do the rest of the ingredients.
All right. So I really enjoy this recipe because it's a fun way to introduce people to eating natto. You're not going to be able to even taste the, uh, the natto in there. Really delicious, great energy, clean protein, all that probiotics, all that vitamin K2, decalcifying your body from the inside out. The natto kinese giving you great circulation. So another question was in relation to sourcing soybeans. Do you have a, a preferred vendor or a suggestion of, of where folks can find organic and, and heirloom like you were describing? Yeah, absolutely. So it's a, it's a really fun question. And I'm glad that somebody has asked that. Uh, the soybeans are not easy to find, and especially in the type that we've described. So I do have a source. Uh, we get ours through a uh, commercial grower, and it's actually quite tough to get them on a retail scale. Um, but I do have a source. It's out of the States, and it's called Laura's Soybeans. They grow soybeans specifically for making natto, and it's for customers to buy. So it's, for, it's on the retail side. Unfortunately for us, this is a commercial side, and uh, that our farmer in, in Ontario that grows these, he's not able to, to do that on the retail side. So uh, Laura Soybeans out of the States, they grow them. They're the exact right type of bean, fantastic source. You can get them in a, in a small size. You can try to look around, though. You know, I know that community has, has soybeans. I know that there's some other places. You can definitely look around, but you're looking for that heritage bean. You're definitely going to want to stay away from beans that are from China. Uh, interesting, interesting fact, 90% of the soybeans grown to make natto are grown right here in North America. And they go in container ships over to Japan and they make the natto there. So it's, it's, we have the resources here. It's just a matter of, of finding them and getting them. So um, my best suggestion, unfortunately, is, is Laura soybeans out of the States. Um, otherwise, you're going to be looking locally and just stay away from China made and non-organic. Uh, non-organic to me means they're GMO'd and uh, it's just not something that I think we should be consuming. And how long have you been making natto? That's another question that came through. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, we have been making it as a company for two years now. And uh, it's just getting better and better as we continue to, to, to grow and develop. And I mean, I, I do want to take a moment just to, to talk about that process. I went through it. I gave you the instructions, but there is a rhythm to, to how this is made. And I've found my rhythm in it. And it's about timing. It's about when that I put them in the incubator. When do I take them out? It's, it's about finding your rhythm in making it. So, um, you know, you, you'll find that after you make it a few times. For me, uh, it's taken, it's taken, you know, two years to find my rhythm in it, uh, but it's certainly going strong now and we, we quite enjoy it. So you also don't have to fear if this looks like a, uh, a, a ferment that, you know, you'd love to try, but making it is not your thing. We will make it for you. Just come down to the light cellar and grab it, pick it up, um, have it, have it uh, straight like that with our sauce or use it for baking, cooking. Fantastic ways to eat this is in omelets is another great way to eat this. Uh, I enjoy it in savory oats. It's great on toast. Uh, it's great with cheese on toast. Uh, some great ways, great on crackers. And if this is your first time ever trying not dough, do me the favor, try it with an avocado. The creaminess of the avocado is fantastic. It tastes great and, and it really, really is a nice way to enjoy it. Also great in salsas, mix that up with a fresh salsa. Um, very hard to, to taste the, the funkiness of the natto, but it's a great way to get the probiotics and all the, the vitamin K too. So good stuff. All right, so we're, we're doing great for time. We've got all our ingredients in there. I just wanna double check we've got everything and we're ready for our, our mix now. Now this one might take a minute, uh, but we will do our best. Definitely going to need to stir that a couple of times and put it back through, but we're getting a nice result from that. That's looking, that's looking good. 
I can see in here, I'm sorry that the camera can't make it over here, but we're going to pour this out and you'll see it in just a minute. What I really like about these natto bites is they've got a great texture. It's everything is about texture. I don't like the mushy beans. I like my fresh beans that have texture. Well, I love the texture in this recipe. All right. Now to the trickiest part of the evening, and that is getting this bowl off of the uh, food processor. All right. Woo, we did it. All right. Yeah. So I don't know if we'll take this guy out. And we'll just get a look at what we've got here. A nice chocolatey, yummy looking. Uh, let's see here. We'll put it in this guy. So what we've got is some nice chocolate nibs. Some chocolate in there. We're going to put those into some balls and coat the outside next. And I can't wait to feed these to all the staff here and get some feedback because I think they are going to be delicious. All right. We are going to throw on some gloves for this. Uh, just because there is some some oil in there and some different things and for my hands uh, the gloves are going to be my best protection. All right so while you're kind of rolling those up there was a question about uh, the ingredients in your sauce. I know I know you spent a long time developing this a lot yeah. of love and care went into perfecting that. They would just like to know our secret ingredients. <laughs> yes. Yeah there we are. <laughs> it's actually uh, it all just starts with the quality of ingredients. So in our sauce, we start with the dashi, which is made from uh, mushrooms and seaweed. And then we follow that up with some, uh, some raw soy sauce, some nama shoyu, and we use some, some vinegar, uh, put a few things, all of that together, and, uh, and it, makes, it makes the sauce. It's really, really quite delicious. Um, there's a little bit of, uh, of sweetness in there as well, and it's... It's something that's actually quite tough because when I make it, it tastes so different warm than it does cold than it does with the beans. So it's, it's a few stages away from when I'm making it to the actual final taste that it delivers with the beans. But my key is to make something that's fresh because I want to pair fresh with umami, right? So I'm always trying to add freshness to the, to the beans. So a great way to eat them is with some uh, green onion on top, some fresh ginger, the avocado, like I mentioned, always trying to put something fresh with it. It really, I mean, in Japan, the traditional way to eat natto is actually in the morning. It's a breakfast dish. It's about aligning your body for the day, all that protein and probiotic, but it's over hot rice with a raw egg and some fresh green onion. So that, that raw egg gets a little bit of warmth from all the heat from the, from the rice, warms it up a little bit, gets that creaminess going and the, the umami from the beans fantastic breakfast dish. So that's the traditional way to eat it. Um, but still, that's, uh, that's only one of the ways. So I've got some coconut and I've got some uh, hemp seeds. I find the hemp seeds just add a great nuttiness uh, flavor to this. But we're going to just roll these guys up into a nice ball. We're looking for, uh, we're, we're going to aim for about, I think it's about 25 grams in there. And we're just going to roll them up like that. I'll just have a little look-see here on the camera so you, you guys can see that. You might have to begin offering this as a, a regular product, hey? Eh? These nacho oh, balls? Well, that's, that's, I'm glad that you mentioned that. We absolutely are. So this is going to be, uh, this is going to be part of our, our offering after the show. In the coming, coming week here, we'll have them at the light seller. You'll be able to come and pick them up. Um, but these are great. Now, for me, I would want to get these into the cooler before they would be totally ready, because here they're still a little bit soft. Um, but once they cool down and they become a little bit harder, fantastic. So we'll just do another another couple here. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these over on the board, just like that, and we'll do a couple more here. So again, without making a mess, we're going to just pour these, get these guys all coated up, and over to the board. 
All right, we got some jealous comments coming in that uh, they wish they could taste. Oh, and you will, you will. Just give me time. I'm going to get them into the stores, into our retail locations. This is fantastic. I'm so thrilled to be offering this. This is a way to introduce people to natto. And I, I have to be honest, once you start eating natto, your body will really crave the vitamin K2. It, it is something that is a magical effect that happens, and it's, uh, it's special. So your body will start to crave the K2. You, uh, you may not necessarily know why, but you'll know that you enjoy eating natto and the results of how it makes you feel. Yeah, I know. I definitely attest to that. I've seen that with a number of customers. Um, natto is described as a bit of an acquired taste, just like some of the very best ferments of the world are. Uh, but when offered in the right context, uh, it actually took, for me, I'd, I'd been aware of it, you know, smelt it a few times, tasted a few times, but it was really sitting down with Eli and him preparing it, as he said, in that kind of fresh way, mixing it up really well. And then that was it. I mean, I was hooked from, from thereafter. It was, it's, it's so, quite you know, incredible. I, I love that story because, you know, for me, and, and this is the part, for me, it's all about how we prepare it. So please, you know, when, you, when people get natto and they try to eat it, they, they get it home and they open the container and they go, what, what, what did I buy? What did I just spend my money on? You know, that's, that's the challenge. And, and, and don't, don't stop there. Please mix it up. Please get the best, you know, even if it's not ours, get, get the best, you know, sauce that you can find, uh, put it in there, mix it up well, and, and get to that true experience of natto. Because if you're eating natto without mixing it and adding sauce and doing all those great things, you're, you're not really uh, eating natto the way you should yeah, to and be I, able to enjoy it. I do want to say it is about the quality that you buy. Uh, my brother-in-law, who is a self-proclaimed uh, natto connoisseur, he's, he's been to Japan, he's, he absolutely loves natto, he buys it all the time here in Calgary, and uh, when he tried the Kyoko natto, he says, hands down, this is the absolute best he's ever tried. And, and uh, it really comes down to how you prepare it, the intention like you're talking about, and then the freshness as well of, of those beans. You are like how, like definitely, you know, the only producer I know of uh, yep. in Canada that is doing fresh and maybe even North America. I'm not sure. Well, we've definitely got some friends in the States, but I, I have to say that we have, we have worked with the health agencies. We've worked with Alberta Health to make sure that everything that we're doing is above board. And we are by far the only licensed producer of natto in Canada. So outside of that, people are making it at home and on hobbies and different things like that. But they're, they're, they have not gone through the same process that we have. And so very soon we'll be uh, national in Canada and be able to ship everywhere. Um, if you're watching this from outside of Calgary, please get in touch with the light seller. If you'd like to order our products, they will be able to ship for you. So I have a couple of balls ready. And I've got a couple of volunteers, I'm sure, somewhere here in our, in our immediate audience that would love to try these. All right, Eli, we've got a couple of questions coming through. Yeah, here you from bet. The I love it. So, All right, Malcolm, get in here. I can't wait for your feedback. So we got Brian uh, asking, is there a danger to take natto uh, in regards to the blood thinning effect? Should you take natto if you're on blood thinning medication? Great question. What do you think, Malcolm? nutty getting that tahini the oh it's it's so good i just i'm so thrilled with the results yeah yeah Oh, oh, it warms my heart. That the your your son is amazing. The smile on his face, it just fills my heart. And to know that he's enjoying these beans, it's everything for us. So that's that's amazing. I do have to say, my daughter Isla, she absolutely loves these. Kid approved, 100 percent She eats 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 them up, just just can't wait to get them. So, you know, this is a great way to get them into your kids' diets. This is all uh, no nuts in here as well. So all seeds, uh, no nuts. So it is safe for school as well. Um, great way to, to get that in. So you can put these into a, uh, into, into a, uh, a uh, vacuum sealed pouch and they can store for many, many weeks even um, without refrigeration. So no, no worries there. So to get back to the question about the blood thinning, I would recommend, uh, you know, if you're 
on blood thinning medications already, this would be this would be increasing that to a level that you would need to talk to your health provider about. So you wouldn't want to take both natto and a blood thinner at the same time because it would it would increase uh, uh, your your blood thinning to a level that might not be safe. So definitely I would work back and forth, but the advantage here is that you may want to go to a food source for blood thinning and get off pharmaceuticals because that also has all kinds of its own effects on it and side effects. So this is a food source for blood thinning that can help you and it is completely safe. You can't get too much of this in your body because it is food source. Mm -hmm. If you get too much in your tummy, uh, it will only take what you need and the rest will, will, will be uh, out. So yeah. Okay, I got one. We got one time for one final question for you, Eli. And, you uh, bet. This one's from myself. Oh, yes. But I was wondering if you could touch a little upon like uh, how natto I've heard is regarded as a fertility food and perhaps and then, yeah. maybe you could enlighten us how it is an aphrodisiac perhaps so it actually kind of it actually excellent question i love it um natto so I, I do have a little bit more to say about about the benefits of natto um soy in itself and and i should have started with this but soy in itself has a bit of a bad reputation and and it deserves that bad reputation because soy has a whole bunch of anti-nutrients in it. It's to protect itself from being eaten by animals, by eaten by humans, and, and those anti-nutrients are not easy for us to digest. It also has isoflavins in it that in volume are not good for our estrogen levels. So though between the isoflavins and the anti-nutrients, that's, that's not where you want to be. Soy is not where you want to be until you ferment it. Once we ferment it, we completely transform that. We transform the isoflavins into isoflavins that actually help us with hormone balance. There has been studies in Japan that show that this has helped women going through menopause and helped to reduce the ups and downs of their hormones to a more steady level. And that's the isoflavins in there. Um, also the anti-nutrients, once we ferment it, it has changed this product from where we started to this amazing superfood. Those anti-nutrients are now nutrients that our body can absorb and that are great for us. So this does not have the same effects on our gut for digestion as raw soy, soy milk, even tofu, anything that's not fermented, that, that soy is not where we wanna be. We always wanna be on the fermented side of, of, of soy. Now to talk about the aphrodisiac side of that, it really comes down to the natto kinase. That natto kinase is helping to thin our blood, dissolve blood clots, improve our circulation, and it's improving our circulation in our entire body. So all parts are working well with that improved circulation. Um, it also has been shown to be beneficial for women for, again, for reproducing to get that blood flow to their ovaries, get that blood flow where they need it to be. So I would say that's where the benefits are. Um, but you tell me, you go home and you try it. You try some of these natto bites, enjoy natto, enjoy a fermented soy product that is 100% wholesome for you. Okay, awesome. Wow, this has been truly enlightening and amazing. And uh, I'd like to just sign off from this session before we transition over to Terry Willard is to let us know one quick fun fact about Nato. I think there's something related to space. And... Yeah, so, uh, you know, I love the fact that the bacteria is from the soil, but the bacteria being so special is that it, it, has, it can survive all kinds of things. So the bacteria itself, Bacillus subtilis, can survive boiling, it can survive freezing, it can survive no oxygen, and in fact, we've, um, they have put Bacillus subtilis on a NASA satellite and it survived for six years in space, in the vacuum of space, in the coldness of that, it survived there for six years. So. To me, I actually, you know, when I, when I daydream about it, I think, you know, was this bacteria here before us? Did it come on a, on, a, on a rock when it hit the earth? How long has this bacteria been here? Is this bacteria from outer space? Is it from another planet? I don't know, but I know that it changes this soybean into a, an amazing superfood and delicious. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you, Eli. Thank you. This thank was you. incredible. Yeah, really appreciate we throw it. We throw it over to Terry. He's going to take us through some skimono. I can't wait. We do have some umeboshi plums here, but we're looking forward to Terry's, uh, Terry's show tonight. I'm going to definitely be enjoying that. Please take us away, Terry. <laughs> right on.